Well, welcome everybody. Um, my name's Lee McJames, and for some reason I wasn't moving quick enough, and I'm the MC for the day. <laughs> I'm the general manager of the National Blood Authority, and it's a great, uh, great privilege, and we do appreciate people making long journeys to get here for this very important occasion. Specifically, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to the Honourable Senator Fiona Nash, Assistant Minister of Health, Deborah Chan, advisor to the Minister, Mr. Gavin Finkelstein, President of the Haemophilia Foundation Australia, Dr. Simon McRae, Chair of the Australian Haemophilia Centre Directors Organisation, Ms. Sharon Karras, Executive Director of the Haemophilia Foundation Australia, Ms. Gail Ganane, Chair of the National Blood Authority Board, Ms. Kerry Flanagan, Deputy Secretary, Department of Health, Mr. Peter Woodley, Assistant Secretary, Department of Health, staff and representatives from the Haemophilia Foundation Australia, bleeding disorder patient and carer representatives, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, as I said, we very much appreciate you joining us today. This event is intended to mark the culmination of an intense period of collaboration that was between clinicians, patients and governments. And the result is a unique outcome supporting people with bleeding disorders. And in terms of unique, that's globally unique. The format of the proceedings are designed to reflect this shared journey by bringing each of these perspectives into focus. Dr. Simon McRae will in the first instance give the clinician's perspective. This will be followed by the patient's perspective given by Gavin Finkelstein. Peter Helen from the NBA will then focus on the MyABDR app and the work to bring the project to, to fruition. These three speeches provide the backdrop, the formal launch, which Assistant Minister Na Nash will preside. In the first instance, <clears throat> I am pleased to introduce Dr. Simon McRae. He's chair of the Australian Haemophilia Centre Directors Organisation. He's well qualified to give the clinicians perspectives. He's currently a haematologist with South Australian Pathology. Having undergraduate and physician training in Hobart, Tasmania, Dr. McRae completed haematology training in the UK and Newcastle. After gaining college entry, he then undertook a four-year fellowship at the McMaster University in Ontario, Canada in the field of venous thrombosis. Dr. McRae coordinates a clinical trial program in the area of venous thrombosis at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and is also involved in running the Haemophilia Treatment Centre at the Royal Adelaide Hospital. <coughs> Excuse me. His particular research interests include the use of, of lab tests to predict clinical outcomes for patients with venous thrombosis, new anticoagulants, and evidence-based management of patients with or at the risk of venous thrombosis. Please welcome Dr. McRae. Thanks, Lee. That sounds a bit exhausting, all that. Uh. <laughs> um, Minister Nash. Um, colleagues from the NBA, friends and colleagues from the uh, haemophilia community. It's, uh, it's a great privilege to be here today uh, representing uh, ACTO, or the Australian uh, Senate, Haemophilia Centre Directors Organisation. Um, we as clinicians have a great privilege of uh, looking after uh, roughly 6,000 patients with bleeding disorders uh, in, in Australia. And uh, the, the most severe of those disorders, such as haemophilia, uh, if we, we look backwards uh, when untreated, uh, resulted in a significant uh, morbidity and mortality, often a life expectancy measured in decades, and uh, a lifetime of, uh, of, of potential chronic disability. Uh, the provision of uh, adequate health care, including uh, clinicians, and also importantly, uh, safe and uh, adequate supplies of clotting factor have changed dramatically uh, the course of uh, the clinical history in this patient group. This was highlighted to me um, perhaps best by the fact I did a clinic this week where I had a grandfather and a grandson in the same, in the same clinic. The grandfather unfortunately uh, had many bleeds uh, when he was young. By the time he was mid-twenties, had to be on a disability pension because of an inability to work and has had long-term issues with uh, chronic pain. Uh, the grandson uh, came across to us uh, from the, the uh, Women's and Children's Hospital in Adelaide with, with perfect joints. Uh, an active participant in, in, in sport uh, and was looking forward to uh, his degree at, at university. And I think um, 
that really highlights uh, to me uh, the importance of ensuring that we're using this resource uh, uh, appropriately uh, and uh, that we're monitoring what the impact of, uh, of using clotted factors is. And I think uh, this sort of app, much more useful than the majority of apps that I have on my phone, uh, allows um, really what, what clinicians and I think patient groups has also has, has been uh, after, so a way of uh, quick and prompt communication between uh, um, uh, patients with bleeding disorders and, and, and clinicians, allowing us to act when we need to, to, to modify treatment, uh, and uh, not having to go through 25 pages of, uh, of diaries when we're in clinic as well, which is always good. Um, and I, I think it, it really has been driven by a clinical need and that's, that's a great outcome. So uh, I'd like to congratulate everyone that's worked uh, on the app. I know Michael and uh, Peter in particular in, at the MBA have been uh, central in, in developing it. And we look forward to rolling it out next week in South Australia. And, uh, and uh, I look forward to getting uh, lots of messages from my, my patients. Thank you. Thanks, Simon. It's now my great pleasure to introduce Mr. Gavin Finkelstein, the president of the Haemophilia Foundation Australia, to give the patient's perspective. Gavin has been the president of Haemophilia Foundation Australia since 2006. He has severe Haemophilia A, and his work in the bleeding disorders community started at the grassroots level through his membership of Haemophilia Western Australia, where he is still currently the president. Gavin represents HFA on various committees and ensures the voices of people living with haemophilia and related inherited bleeding disorders and their families are heard. Gavin is involved in the World Federation of Haemophilia and has participated in development programs and of course is involved in the upcoming World Haemophilia Con Congress in Melbourne in May of this year. Please give Gavin a warm welcome. Good morning, uh, Assistant Minister Nash and representatives of the Department of Health and to everyone here from the different parts of the blood sector. I can only say what a great pleasure it is that we're here today at the MBA. Thank you to Lee McJames and his team for organising this launch. The Australian Bleeding Disorders Registry has been in operation for many years and there's been a lot of work done to improve the quality of the data held in the registry. It is a good tool for haemophilia centres to support the clinical management of people with bleeding disorders. Further, this registry has always has been able to help governments plan for adequate supplies of clotting factors. There are people in this audience from the community and government officials as well who remember how difficult it was when we didn't have enough clotting factor. In those days we depended on plasma derived bleed, um, treating products to treat our bleeds. But we had many people living with the pain of uncontrolled bleeds, kids miss huge amounts of schooling and their parents missed work because they were caring for them or sitting with them in hospitals. People died or became severely disabled ahead of their time. There, were just, there was just not enough clotting factor to go around. Adult patients said try and look after the children first. Many of these people still suffer for lack of treatment from back then in those days. Fortunately, it is now possible for bleeds to be treated properly in both children and adults. And we hope those bad old days in Australia are well behind us. We must remember that the best practice care and treatment that does not mean access to clotting factor. This alone will not improve the quality of life and health of people in our community. We also need properly resourced hemophilia treatment centres with appropriate clinical and allied health services. These services are somewhat inconsistent around the country today. Working towards improving the situation is one of our priority areas. It is great that we have people here today who are representing state and haemophilia foundations from around Australia, as well as HFA representatives. In October 2011, a decision by our HFA Council led to our approach to Australian Haemophilia Centre Directors Organisation to seek their support for a national system for patients to record their clotting factor usage and for this to be linked with the registry to support best practical clinical care and treatment. The community recognised data 
was critical to ensuring the needs of people the needs of people with haemophilia and other inherited bleeding disorders would be met. It, appreciate, it appreciated that the high cost of treatment products for governments needed to be planned for carefully so everyone could have the treatment and care that they needed. That council resolution stated, and I quote, that relevant stakeholders would need to explore and evaluate appropriate options, financial and resource requirements, and an effective implementation and evaluation plan. And here it is today, in March 2014, and we are celebrating the official launch of MyABDR that is being rolled out as it is being rolled out around the country. I would like to thank the community members for their commitment to this project. Participation in the development, promotion and rollout has taken up a lot of their time and effort and we hope everyone will be, will be proud of this achievement. As a collaboration between the NBA, ACTO, health professionals at haemophilia centres and the community, which includes patients and their families and carers, we could not wish for a better result. We have worked together to develop a phone app and web-based tool that is safe for patients to use in terms of their privacy and we feel sure that it will be useful, information, information will be available to help people better understand their bleeding patterns and make a plan for them and their clinicians to best manage their treatment processes. And further de-identified and aggregated information can be used to understand the bigger picture at government level. We now need to build on this great resource and we look forward to the opportunities we have to use the data. We know it is not enough for us to say clotting factor is important because it stops and prevents bleeding and that it makes it possible for, less, for us to live better in our challenging lives. Home therapy has of course improved our lives and with the benefit of the clinical expertise at haemophilia centres, we are living longer and hopefully more productive lives. But at all levels now, we need statistics to prove it, or the evidence so that we can understand our bleeds, how we might treat ourselves more effectively, and more generally, how best to plan for the ongoing requirements of our community. This still requires collaboration. My ABDR has demonstrated how the NBA, ACTO and HFA, with the support of governments around Australia, can continue to do this. In conclusion, I thank all the jurisdictions for funding this project and everyone who contributed to its success and express my hope and HFA's expectation that my ABDR will always be of use and benefit to people in the bleeding disorders community. Thank you. Thank you, Gavin. And now our final speaker before the launch. I'm pleased to welcome Peter O'Halloran, Executive Director, Health Provider Engagement and our ch oh, the Chief Information Officer at the National Blood Authority to provide an overview of the development and delivery of the MyABDR app project. Peter continues to be a driving force in the delivery of IT improvements rolled out across the blood sector in recent years. He joined the NBA in 2008 from the university sector. Peter. Well, good morning, Minister, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as previous speakers have spoken, my ABDR is a collaboration between HFA, ACTO, and the wider community members, whether it's health professionals, people with bleeding disorders, and their carers. And I think that's one of the key things that's come through for us as we've worked through this process, is that we've been able to develop an application that actually meets the needs of all of those stakeholders. So the smartphone app is designed very much for patients to be able to use quickly and easily. It can be filled out in 30 seconds while a bleed is, an infusion is occurring. Buttons are designed so that if you have joint mobility issues, it's very easy to select the buttons. And then from a clinical point of view, the information goes directly into APDR and is available in real time for the health professionals that are caring for people with bleeding disorders. From a government perspective, we think that's wonderful because we then get real time data in terms of demand for product so that we can do better supply planning to ensure the products are available as they come through. But I suppose going back to where we started, I originally started this idea, we go into this project, 2012, we're sort of working with HFA and ACTO looking at what we could do and have the idea, well, we can go and pick something up off the shelf overseas, tweak it a bit for Australian conditions, link it into the system and away we went. We did some research and came away truly actually surprised at the time that there is nothing else in the world currently set up that enables people with bleeding disorders 
to have access to their records from their equivalent of ABDR across the world, to then actually be able to see that on a smartphone, record bleeds, record infusions, view their records and update it and have their clinicians see it in real time. So this is really a global first. Um, and the way we've developed it very much is through collaboration. So we've actually managed through a series of focus groups, evenings, weekends, late night phone calls across the country, whenever people are available, to develop it in-house. We have also delivered it on time and under budget. So it's not often I can say that for an <laughs> IT system. <laughs> but so far it's there. Um, and I think, I suppose, I've had the great privilege through this whole process of really being able to work with a large range of community members and health professionals who have really welcomed my team and I into their, into their facilities, into their experiences to help us develop something that actually worked for them. And earlier this week, I had the great privilege, uh, one of the, the major hospitals in Melbourne, of actually attending one of the community training sessions and spoke to a whole range of patients and there are a whole lot of probing questions and it sort of felt almost like Spanish Inquisition two hours later I'm still there answering ob obscure questions I think at the right answers. But what was really lovely after that session was one of the uh, people that had been there actually came up and spoke to me for about 10 minutes after the session. And this had been someone who'd had haemophilia, he's been treating himself for 30, 40 years, has seen a lot, has experienced a large amount of what's happened. And it was his approach, he said he came into it very sceptical, yet another system, it'll come, it'll go, governments will get what they want and we'll be left doing what, doing all the hard work for you. And it was the revelation for him that he came to through the session that actually this would work, this would actually improve his outcomes, this would help him keep records and have con better control of his condition. And that to me I think is probably the key thing, is that this will enable us to help improve people's lives, improve the clinical outcomes, and is actually going to work for patients. And so that, I suppose, for me, really is the, is the message that comes out of this, is that the, the collaboration and early engagement with the community has made such a large difference. Now, I suppose while we're on that topic for a moment, there are a few key people I really would like to recognise because without them, we could not have got anywhere with this project. So from ACTO, uh, Drs John Rao, Chris Barnes and Simon McRae, uh, these are all driving forces. Um, we, this project has been going on for some years, and before that, we've been working in ABDR for some years. Um, and throughout that whole process, there's been good humour, wise wisdom and guidance from these three uh, that has really helped to shape and deliver systems that work. Uh, from HFA, uh, very much Gavin Finkelstein, Sharon Karras and Susanna O'Callaghan, who have put up with all sorts of strange requests from my team and I at weird times to work out how we can tweak things and make it work. Always with good humour and always with very sage advice to ensure that we deliver something that actually works. My biggest thanks, however, is to the myriad of community members and health professionals who have given their time freely, constantly, without complaint. So pick a beautiful day in Melbourne on a Saturday, you can go out and enjoy life, or you can spend eight hours looked up in the hotel at the airport going through endless different things with software developers. And they did it without complaint. And look, some of those members are here today, and that really is a, a, a great thing. Uh, finally, very much to some of the team at the MBA here. So we've got um, Michael Linegar, uh, who looks after application development and his amazing group of people who helped develop the application. And also Jo Cameron and her amazing group uh, from the support side who have actually been the ones out on the ground rolling this out and working with community members. So in conclusion, thank you very much for your time this morning and I look forward to a number of uh, years of continuing to work with the community and delivering my ABDR and enhancing it. Thanks, Peter. Um, it is now my great honour to introduce the Honourable Senator Fiona Nash, Assistant Minister for Health. Senator Nash was elected to the Australian Senate in 2004 and her term began in 1st July 2005. Senator Nash has served on a range of Senate committees. She has also served as the Shadow Parliamentary Secretary for Water Resources and Conservation and Shadow Parliamentary Secretary for Regional Education. She is currently the National Party's Party Whip in the Senate and Deputy Leader of the Nationals in the Senate. Please welcome Senator Nash to officially launch my OBDR. Uh, thank you very much, Lee, to Mr. Gavin Finkelstein, uh, Ms. Sharon Kerris, Dr. Simon McRae, Ms. Gail Janine, Ms. Kerry Flanagan, and Mr. Peter Woodley, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I do uh, have to say, just at the outset, I've had a very brief introduction to the technology here at the NBA, and I am very, very impressed. 
Uh, thank you very much for inviting me here today to launch the MyABDR application. I really enjoy every opportunity that I have to, to meet and to thank those who are delivering outcomes that improve health services in Australia. The work at the National Blood Authority to deliver a safe and secure blood supply is an important area in my portfolio. The supply of blood is a critical health service that directly saves lives every hour of every day in communities throughout Australia. In addition, the National Blood Authority oversees a significant budget on behalf of Australian governments that will exceed 1.1 billion in 2013-14. In Australians living with bleeding disorders are central participants in the blood sector. Bleeding disorders, such as haemophilia, can be debilitating without appropriate treatment and the availability of replacement clotting factors is a key element. The federal, state and territory governments will spend in the vicinity of $200 million in this financial year to continue to support individuals living, living with these chronic conditions. The MyABDR app is a globally unique smartphone app. It is a significant step forward in improving the support available to Australians living with bleeding disorders. As highlighted by the previous speakers, the MyABDR app is a great success story that contributes to the needs of patients, clinicians, medical staff and governments. It is also an outstanding example of what can be achieved through genuine and close collaboration and I think we've heard that very clearly today. The app will enable people with bleeding disorders and their carers to record bleeds and home treatments in real time, wherever they are, and have those details immediately listed on their clinical record in the Australian Bleeding Disorders Registry. It will allow clinical staff in their respective haemophilia treatment centres to provide more timely and targeted clinical care to improve patient outcomes. The app will also provide governments with enhanced data to better manage supply and model actual patient treatments against agreed benchmarks and guidelines. This is an important project delivered on time and indeed under budget, and very good to hear the under budget part. <laughs> and perhaps of greater note, it meets all stakeholders' needs with a high level of user acceptance, or to put it simply, it works. That is one of the great dividends from the partnership we have seen between governments, clinicians and patients on this project. I commend and thank all those involved in bringing the My ABDR app to fruition, including the Haemophilia Foundation Australia, the Australian Haemophilia Centre Directors Organisation and the National Blood Authority. The app is an e-health world first in supporting individuals with bleeding disorders and you should be justifiably proud of the result. Congratulations to all concerned and I look forward to the improvements this development will bring to the healthcare of Australians living with these conditions. It is now my privilege to officially launch the MyABDR app. Thank you. And Minister, if I can invite you to, to uh, cut the ribbon, so to speak. Very modern technology. Okay, let's see if I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> and now the My Abidiar app is launched. <laughs> Um, thank you, Minister.